episode three of the UConn Basketball Show by 860. Today we're talking the release of UConn's December Big East schedule, some news around the Big East Media Day, even more transformation picks from the gym, as well as some recruiting news for the class of 21. Thanks to every one of my viewers, really appreciate you guys uh, liking it and subscribing. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. The Big East announced their December schedule during Media Day last week. The Big East is waiting to release the rest of the schedule to see how everything unfolds in the next few months. But UConn, it is official, will open up Big East play at Gamble against St. John's on Friday, December 11th. The Huskies then will travel to D.C. to play the Hoyles on the 13th, followed by a game at Providence on the 17th, back home on the 20th to face Creighton. Then to end the first five Big East games, UConn will travel to Chicago to play DePaul. UConn's early season tournament this year, the Legends Classic, which was moved to Mohegan Sun, is now expected to be held on the 1st and 3rd of December. The matchups remain to be determined, but the field includes USC, UConn, Vanderbilt, and BYU, who replaced Notre Dame after they dropped out. Those are the only official games UConn has for their schedule so far, but according to Dave Borges, the Huskies are planning on playing at least three non-conference games this season. No dates official for those ones yet, but they're all expected to be before the start of Big East play. UConn called Florida and canceled its December 6th road game at the University of Florida and instead agreed to play NC State at Mohegan on December 5th. I know UConn fans always enjoy the matchups with the Gators, but with the current state of things, this seemed to be a very smart move for the Huskies. It gives UConn three games in five days all in the state of Connecticut and with the other non-conference opponent expected to be Sacred Heart and Central Connecticut, UConn won't be doing any traveling for the non-conference games. UConn announced all games this season will be held at Gamble and without fans. Unfortunate, but it's expected. I'm just happy that it looks like we're going to be able to have a college basketball season. Obviously, a lot still in the works for the Huskies 2021 season, but just seeing those December dates for the Big East makes me real jacked up. And... I think we can maybe go 5-0. I know it's a bold prediction, but those games look winnable for the Huskies in the Big East. I think the toughest challenge would be Creighton. You know, they're real solid and it'll show what UConn has made up this year. The schedule wasn't the only thing people were talking about from Big East Media Day. James Boog Knight was named to the second team, which was a shock to many people like myself. Obviously, it's preseason awards and it doesn't really mean that much, but I think it shows that the Big East might be sleeping on UConn a little bit. Boognight handled it with much more class than I would have. He said it was an honor. Boognight seems to be in that hyper-focus mode right now. I expect him to show up big right away this season. Seeing Hall's coach express his opinion on UConn for joining the Big East at Media Day, <laughs> he said, and I quote, well, it sucks for us. I didn't vote for it. I voted against it. I'm still not really happy about it. I saw a lot of Husky fans taking this as a shot, but I looked at it more as him just being honest because honestly, having UConn back for him sucks. Seton Hall has recently, you know, been gaining a good amount of momentum. They've been getting good recruits and competing highly in the Big East for about, I want to say, like the last five years. Now, with UConn back, that's an immediate threat. Look at it, it's already been greatly affecting them. UConn's highly recruited freshman, Adam Sango, for example, had a Seton Hall offer. Many people were thinking he had a strong lean towards Seton Hall, but then Dan Hurley came and snatched him up. Also, every single one of UConn's commits for the Class of 21, Diggins, Sampson, and Hawkins, all have Seton Hall offers. And Samson Johnson is basically from Seton Hall's backyard. So yeah, I bet it sucks a lot for him. But daddy's back. What are you gonna do? UConn is officially back practicing and close to full strength. A cook and Adams have been working in and out of practice showing good signs in the process of recovery. The coaching staff expects them back sometime early in the season, which heats up the battle for playing time. This Husky team is extremely deep this year. It'll be interesting to see how the minutes are distributed in the beginning of the season. One thing for sure though, this UConn team will be looking much bigger out on the core this year. The transformation picks that have been rolling in from UConn strength coach Mike Redford is insane. Boog Knight has reportedly gained 23 pounds since coach Mike came to stores. Boog Knight is listed at 195 with under 5% body fat. What? Oh yeah, and that electric freshman that can jump out of the gym, Andre Jackson? Well, he gained 30 pounds. And freshman Adama Sanga, well, he looks like the biggest UConn player we've had since Andre Drummond. A cook literally looks like he went to boot camp and Gaffney's biceps are absolutely piercing. 
this UConn team isn't going to get outworked physically this season, that's for sure. UConn's top-rate class of 21 has been making some waves in the headlines lately. This past weekend, Rasul Diggins and Samson Johnson showed very well. Samson Johnson was named MVP of the Slam 16 game with a double-double, six blocks, and a couple nice lobs for future teammate Rasul. This class of 21 for the Huskies is impressive on paper, but I think it may be even more impressive than people really think. Samson Johnson looks like a player that was severely underranked. The future looks bright in stores, that is for sure. But all eyes are on this year. The hype is real and it's almost over. The wait is almost over. November 23rd, the start date. Thank you for watching episode three. We're gonna be doing episode four on the 30th of November to recap those first games and then to preview the Legends Classic. Make sure to check out 860production.com for blogs, videos, and much more news updates. Thank you guys all for checking in. We'll see you guys later this month. Go Huskies.